That's why they say smoke and kills. Mm. You know, for being completely on fire, I think she's actually taking it pretty well. <laughs> she is, every part of her is in flames. I mean, she can deflect a knife. And what if she was twice on fire, though? Yeah, call me when you come back from space, lady. <laughs> Big Boss can't really talk much right now, but he's just looking at it just like, shh, seen it. Okay, have time to go. What, what, what happened to the woman? The woman? I... We gave her a light. She took the short way down. Who are you? Where am I? You're talking to yourself. Been watching over you for nine years. You can call me Ishmael. Sorry, I almost poked I your eye out. What's going on. Can't really see too well around these bandages. Land of the living. Bad news? A world wants you dead. On your feet, soldier. The whole place is coming down. <sighs> Need a little pick me up? Okay. Here. No. Oh, no, I've been clean for I'll ten be years back now. Back <laughs> those those come ears count, damn it. Come on! You know, it was a great way to stop being addicted, honestly. <laughs> Alright. This withdrawal would be made easier if you're unconscious the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so first, um, when you're moving the camera and stuff, you can, like, press the, the stick in to zoom in more. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that during cutscenes as well, just like in all the previous games, where you could, you could zoom in and move the camera around during cutscenes. Um, but yeah, Big Boss spoke, and it wasn't David Hayter. Uh, David Hayter is nowhere in this game. Big Boss has been entirely replaced with Kiefer Sutherland. Because uh, Kojima, especially as of late, has been really into having celebrities mm -hmm. voice and also appear in his games. Um, if David Cage can do it, maybe somebody who makes good games can. <laughs> Damn! It's true, though. <laughs> um, so, yeah, David Hayter wasn't even, like, told about Metal Gear Solid V. It was just, like, announced, and somebody else was voicing Snake, and he was just like, oh, what the hell? We're getting out of here. Move it. And like, they they tried to get rid of David Hayter in the past. I actually learned that for Metal Gear Solid 3, he had to completely retry for the role of Snake before they would sign him on again. Huh. They actually looked for other people uh, around 3. I love how atrophied uh, Big Boss's arms are here. That's yeah, so it's scary. it's pretty cool, actually. Uh, the, the, they actually change his body. Uh, also, just animation-wise, when mm -hmm. he's... Once we get more into light, uh, when he's crawling, you can actually see his back muscles tense up when he moves and stuff. It's pretty neat. Should have been getting more massages. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, just, you know. There are already like 10 masseuses in the hospital just going in shifts all day around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, butt crack. Butt crack. Butt crack alert. Oh, yeah. If you want to see this guy's butt crack a lot, well, you will. <laughs> Doesn't happen too often in video games, so when there's a chance, you better press the zoom in button. <laughs> Your hero, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. He's he, he's been sleeping for a while. You know, it's he can't quite walk yet, but mm -hmm. eventually he'll remember how to fight dinosaurs like he did <laughs> nine years ago. I mean, so so many uh, Metal Gear Solid games have had themes just about the power fantasy in general. Mm -hmm. It's a real fun way to, it's like, yep, here we go again. Yeah. New new angle. Let's, let's take it from the top. This section is also really interesting because uh, before Metal Gear was ever even announced, there was... This this game was teased as a completely different game yeah. by a fake development studio. What the hell is that? 
and it was just a really strange marketing way of like marketing Metal Gear as like this really mysterious like horror themed game. Something's coming. And like throughout this game, but especially like in in these early parts, there is like a slight horror tinge to oh, it, which is say. also yeah. yeah, which which is also <laughs> <Like> interesting. <so. laughs> which is also interesting because at the same time Kojima was working on Metal Gear, he was working on Silent Hills with Guillermo del Toro, mm -hmm. uh, noted video game motion capture artist Guillermo del Toro. Yes, uh, and so I'm I'm just always curious if like that horror stuff with Silent Hills was leaking into Metal Gear a little bit. Um, but either way, I really like it. So you've been saved by fire out of nowhere, water mm. out of nowhere. Somebody's gonna, mm. like, get picked up in a tornado, and then there will be a <laughs> landslide. Uh, that's right, the new Freak Show bosses of Metal Gear Solid V are, um, the Planeteers. <laughs> That would work. Like, they all go home to, to their various continents. They have a globetrotting <laughs> yeah. adventure. Yeah. And once again, you've been working for the bad guy the whole time, Hoggish Greedley. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Agent of the Patriots. <laughs> uh, so over on this cork board is uh, a poster. Uh, this was at Ooh. GDC several years ago, inviting people to join the... Fox team uh, mm. at Kojima Productions because they that logo in the bottom right, the, the Kojima Productions logo but red, they actually opened up a new studio in LA that was doing additional work for them, and they were the people who worked entirely on Metal Gear Online for this game. Um, if I remember correctly, they are just gone entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas a lot of the staff from Kojima Productions is still working at Konami, just not under the name, because Kojima was somehow allowed to take that with him when he made his new studio. Um, but yeah, even by the time this game came out, like, it had already been, like, maybe even half a year that it was known that Kojima was leaving once Metal Gear was done, so right. it's a little awkward to see that poster in the game and go like, ooh, <laughs> wait, mm. Mm. Couldn't, couldn't turn that into a bikini babe at the last moment, huh? All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know you're in Metal Gear Land. Oh, yeah. Hold up, let's fix this. Ugh. That was the faint beeps from, like, the, the heal menu in Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah, yep. Next time, do it yourself. It's always good to try and measure injuries while hiding from the enemy. Over there. Uh, I should also mention that <clears throat> the cutscenes in this game all uh, have the same direction in that they're always one take. Uh, they're, they're never oh, cuts yeah. between different camera angles. It is always a handheld camera, and it is always a single take. Um, it's cool, but sometimes I wish they didn't do it, and also... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I have learned from from some people who know much more about cameras and being cameramen way, that the uh, the shaky cam motion is it's done through just code that's randomly generating the the camera shakes. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Apparently, it's really easy to see when it loops sometimes or something like that, and I guess it's really distracting to those people. <laughs> well, that's how it is with anything that lines up with like your personal expertise. Yeah. So it's good that I don't have anything. Uh, <laughs> oh. Never comes up for me. Mm. Ignorance really is bliss, kids. Oh. Learned so much here in this Let's Play. <laughs> Help me, please. Ah! 
The cool thing about the one take handheld camera direction though is that, you know, the camera's al always seamlessly moving between gameplay and cutscene, and that's yeah, really nice. Yeah. They did a little bit of that back in Metal Gear Solid 4, um, and they just went all in with it this time around. Don't look at me. So, how you doing? Haven't come mm. by this wing before. Yeah, I mean, you know, just chilling out in a coma, getting massages. Just living the good life. <laughs> I haven't really been down to this part before, but, uh... I mean, I always miss your name. I... Is, uh... Oh, it's... Okay, your name's... John, right? No, J... Jean. Okay, it's Jean. I'm sorry. Well, Jean, I hope to uh, see you again. Have a nice day. Wow, you are really good at hide and seek, though. Yeah. Let's move. As we mentioned, the, the Fox engine, uh, which, you know, the game looks real nice. Uh, this game is the, the PC version on Steam. Mm -hmm. uh, this game runs super well, even on really old crap computers, honestly, and it still looks pretty nice. Uh, but uh, Fox engine does a bunch of super cool stuff. Um, and I mean, while more studios are doing it now, a lot of the faces in this game are just 3D scanned from actual people. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of the clothes and material in this are made in a separate program that allows them to just, like, upload sewing patterns of clothing and then, like, construct it via that. And there's, like, actual, like, not in the game itself, but, like, when you're making the model and stuff, like, the zippers and stuff actually function. <laughs> so they could, like, zip something halfway up and that's how it would be in the game. It's ridiculous. Right. Don't get caught in those searchlights. Uh, so there's like, there's actual cover mechanics in, in this game now. Uh, there's no button for it. If you just run into cover, Snake will take cover. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do in this game, but at the moment, uh, you know, he can barely move, so mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be a bit before that stuff introduced. <laughs> So we're expecting, what, like, 200, 300 videos? Oh, yeah. Uh, Big Boss can sprint now, though. Hey! Which is pretty cool. Wow. Hey. Hey. I just, I just thought I'd make sure you don't have the flu or whatever. Sometimes the, the, the flu might get you before these dudes with guns do. Who knows? <laughs> Just got a bit of a cough. Don't worry. Move! Go! Who do I choose, though? My best friend or this new man who's so courteous about germs? Oh! oh. My best friend it is. <laughs> it's the first choice in the, uh... The morality system in the Phantom Pain. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's all about who you're friends with. This way. Shit. It's ugly down there. Turn back. So you have been on what, the fifth, sixth floor this whole time, something like that? Yeah, this I wanna way. say it's probably like the sixth. It's pretty close to the top of this place. I'm a great one. So yeah, Come the window on. really was a shortcut. Ishmael was not lying. Yeah. Oh, 
What's happening out there? It's all right. We'll be okay. No, my friend. I don't know what's happening, and I just have one friend, and I'm just so clingy to him, and I just feel so lost. Has anybody here seen a man who's dressed in a green smock? You can see his butt crack. Does anybody fit that description here? <laughs> just scanning all the wastes here. Do I see an ass? No, not him. Oh, wait a minute. Is that an ass I spy? Not sure. Quick. Zoom in! Enhance! Yes! That's him! I found the booty! And Meryl thought she was special. <laughs> oh no, my, my... My friend! That's what you get for trying to cut in line. Go to the front. You get shot. Get out! Oh, thank God. He's okay. Wait, is there a butt? Yep. Those cloth effects, though. Ooh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What's messed up is you know the Fox Engine is super nice. Uh, Konami holds the rights to it; they get to keep it, and it's <laughs> barely being used for anything. They used it. The Fox Engine was also being used for PES, their their soccer game franchise. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're still making those, because I think they were, like, getting... They weren't starting to not sell that well compared to FIFA and all that. Mm -hmm. um, there is one more Metal Gear, Metal Gear game being made by Konami. Metal Gear Survive, which is a multiplayer zombie survival game? <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, it doesn't look great. But, I mean, who knows? It could still be fun. There's still people who worked on this game, working on that game. It's not like just because Kojima's gone that, like, it can't be good. Bite him! Bite him! Ow! But yeah, outside of Metal Gear Survive, who knows if the Fox Engine will ever get used again? Which is also a big bummer. What other game is going to have mouth on cloth physics? Wow. Well, you know how many zippers there are in those soccer uniforms, so. <laughs> Yeah, they... Kojima Productions had plenty of, like, streams and presentations on just, like, the features of the engine and how they work making assets for the game. There's even a part where it was just like, we can scan objects and just put it in the game, like, look, here's a rock. We found this really cool rock, <laughs> and we, put, we scanned it, and now it's in the game. Look at this rock. Wow. I love all those demos they did. Like, there was that, um, picture of a conference room, and they're like, okay. Yeah. Is this a real conference Negative. room, or is this in the Fox engine? In here yeah, it's it's honestly pretty hard to tell. They the the thing this engine probably nailed the most was um, lighting. Mm -hmm. There there's something about the the way it handles lighting that just looks pretty damn nice. This way. I'll foul that butt wherever it goes. Just get in the wheelchair and scoot. <laughs> Realm. We're sitting ducks. Blend in with the bodies. Get down on your stomach and crawl. I mean, look, if one of you could find a gun, one could push the person in the wheelchair, and the person in the wheelchair could be like a mounted gun person. Yeah, it's the tiniest tank. <laughs> One curious thing here is like, oh, play dead. There actually is a button you can press to kind of play dead, but they don't actually have you do it here. Huh. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know how corpses always hold themselves up a few inches by their elbows? Yeah, I mean, they just fell that way. Rigor mortis set in really quick. They're in that <laughs> position. Pull 
my rocket launcher in case one of these corpses is still alive. Most of these soldiers realize they're in Metal Gear, but that guy thinks he's in Resident Evil. <laughs> I'll double tap with the rocket launcher. Good shooting, Tex. Yeah, thumbs up. Got them all. Like shooting corpses in a hospital. Wait. Wait a minute. Hey Bob, you hear that pissin'? I think I hear a pissin'. Where could this piss be from? Oh. I can't believe Kojima faked us out with a piss. <laughs> he loves the piss! Launcher doesn't seem so silly now, huh? <laughs> Everybody here wishes they had the rocket launcher. Well, guess what? That is leaving me. I don't know why when he gets shot with a grenade it sounds so juicy. Mm. <laughs> it's just slurping that grenade up. I bet that guy's glad he's in the one part of the hospital not up to fire code. <laughs> Sprinklers are 98% effective at eliminating fires before the fire department can even arrive. Wow. I love that when he gets shot by the helicopter, his reaction is just like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, you may have noticed uh, there are non-stop lens flares in this game. Hell uh, yes. Uh, Kojima, so, as you know, and as Kojima has said in Peace Walker, uh, he, he is 70% movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has always been super influenced by movies. Uh, it's just now, finally, uh, modern, he, he has run out of inspirations from the old movies he liked when he was younger. So now <laughs> he, he's caught up to modern movies and... You know, he watched the, the Abrams Star Treks and stuff, and he loved the lens flares. It's that visceral quality, you know, you're really there. It's it's like physical, analog, on yeah. film, even though none of that is true. But... <laughs> there are also some other things we'll see in later cutscenes, which are also design elements that he really liked from other fairly recent films. That's the thing. There are a lot of really good recent films. Yeah. All right, just eat a ration. Come on. Yeah. So you do not. You have regenerating health in this game. There's no longer a health bar. But, when you get seriously injured, your health will no longer regenerate, and you have to heal your injuries. You don't go into a cure screen or anything like MGS3, you just press a button, and you have to take time to actually, like, sit there and, like, fix your arm or leg or whatever. That's messed up, but cool, I Yeah, I, it actually- I th it works pretty well, for the most part, I think. Um, also, you may notice, uh, that statue there might look familiar. Uh, that is actually a statue of the boss on her horse. Oh. You also may notice the colors look weird right now. 
when Big Boss gets really hurt and he's recovering from pain, he his all the reds in his vision disappear <laughs> for a little bit. It's, so it's the opposite of every other action hero. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the, the explanation for that is because the uh, the horn uh, that you saw on the x-ray that's in his head uh, it is impairs his vision a little bit. So if he, like, knocks his head real hard, he'll stop seeing some colors for a bit. <laughs> of course there's an explanation. There's always an explanation. <laughs> Surprised you haven't had like 30 codec calls by now. Mm hmm. Yeah, this game seems a lot easier when you have a gun. Mm hmm. Wait, what's the aim button? What's the attack? Okay. <laughs> it's still, you know, traditional third-person shooter stuff, just like in MGS4 and Peace Walker. Yeah, mm -hmm. first-person view as well. You can switch shoulders. Uh, this is by far the best controlling Metal Gear. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see a lot of that in later videos. Uh, but it the game feels really good to play. There's nothing clunky about this. Um, and also, even when you're behind cover, bullets can still hit you. Sometimes they can ricochet off stuff. Ah. Mm -hmm. Tricky. Nice work. Let's go. Man, you're, you're boosting your combo meter. <laughs> yeah, there's a meter that counts how many times you've been hit. Um, th that uh, affects your score uh, at the end of missions, because you, you also get ranked, just like in Peace Walker. Uh, this is also the first Metal Gear really, where you can just pick up other people's guns with no issue. <laughs> um, these guys have, like, Uzis and stuff, but they don't have a lot of ammo, so it's just better to keep the gun you're, you are given. They already used it on all of the sick people. Yeah. We're just being consistent here. So, uh, when I was mentioning the lens flares and all that, I actually know a person who interviewed with Kojima. Uh, they, they were looking for a video person, and Kojima was asking a lot of questions at the time about how lenses work and getting accurate lens flares for the type of lens that would be used in a camera in this game. <laughs> I'll run interference. Alright, that dude uh, is... That specific dude gets super bewildered by the man diving over the stairs and then just vanishing. Mm -hmm. uh, so he basically won't catch us. <laughs> he, he just looks at those stairs for a while. Real confused. I also want to show mm. this game tries to be more accurate when you're aiming with, like, quote unquote realistic when you're aiming with guns. A lot of games, even like the Uncharted games, like, even if the gun, the crosshairs in the middle of the screen, if you fire a bullet, it goes to the middle of the screen. Uh, even if the model of the gun is physically touching, like, a wall or some other object, but the cursor. You know, it still looks like it should hit the guy, so the bullet will still hit the guy. This game doesn't do that. Yeah. If the gun is actually, like, caught between another object, the cursor will kind of point to where it's actually going to shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, which is why, like, when I went into first person, I was looking at a way different spot than the cursor was. It's weird, but... Sure? 
Look, it's tactical. It's very tactical. Doing tactical Spare. operations here. <laughs> tactical ghost tank operations. You know, Metal Gear. I've always wondered, like, at this point, you hey, know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's 1984 in this game. At this point, there's already been enough paranormal shit happening in the world that wouldn't every special ops soldier be very debriefed that there are ghosts? <laughs> when they always just be like, whatever, wherever the fuck you go, just be prepared for, like, a psychic or a dude covered in bees. Fucking anything. Anything can happen in this world. Like, really, this is only the second time, right? There's the Cobra unit, and these are the mm. only other weirdos. I am, suppose, am I missing anybody? Uh, we, I never did a Let's Play of Partable Ops, and it's also in a weird witchy-washy, yeah, half-canon, yeah, exactly. half-not. There were psychics in that game. And also a dude who could project his voice miles away into people's heads. <laughs> yeah. And Okay, there, there was an electric man. There was an electric man. I just want to, like... The, the man on fire... I just want to, like... He has some bullets just, like, poking out of his face like they're, like, awful moles. It's just, like, you want to get, like, tweezers and pluck them out. Go to the doctor. Get that surgically removed. I just love all the people who shot him in a way that perfectly made a bandolier. <laughs> yeah. How much you want to bet a lot of the, the spots that he has bullet holes or whatever mm -hmm. line up with... Uh, Big bosses, what, 103 bits of foreign material? Oh, yeah, like 108 or something. Uh, you can shoot this guy a whole bunch if you want, and he just kind of grunts a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it has, has been demonstrated. Unfortunately, there are no sprinklers anywhere in this room. So, oh. That happens eventually if you get close to it. <laughs> so that, that's a new move Big Boss has. He can dive now. Nice. The dive is pretty useful as well. Move in! Go, go, go! Shoot him more! <laughs> Eventually he'll get two full-on bullets and he'll get a tummy ache. Eventually he'll die of lead poisoning. Also, I've always found it a little curious that the, the you know, they see the floating psychic child and they, they get a little concerned, like, should we shoot the psychic floating child? But they have no problem shooting all these defenseless people in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> floating psychic children is where, you know, well, it's not where the line is drawn. It's not hospital, though. <laughs> yeah. Over 18, you're fair game. This kid, okay. though. Oh, no. Even if you're in a coma. So juicy. I've always been a little bummed that the later Metal Gears took a different, um, like, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 had this style with, um, blood that mm -hmm. was really, that I liked because it was kind of, even though it was kind of cartoony, and that was everyone had extremely high blood pressure. Oh, of course. Uh, they, you know, blood would spurt miles away if somebody got shot. And, and these no later such games thing as a low sodium diet in Metal Gear. <laughs> no. Uh, at, at this, in, in this game though, everyone's more like packed with fruit gushers. <laughs> All right, they're they're doing their thing. We'll just leave. Okay, gotta hire another cameraman. <laughs> 